Welcome back to College Football Addiction. I've got Stingray from the Stingray Show. It's tied 100.9 FM, I think. They're in Tuscaloosa, man. How are you doing, bud? Doing good, man. Hey, waiting for this huge Week 5 matchup between Georgia and Alabama right here in Tuscaloosa. I'll give you a little interesting stat here. Over the past few years, since 2017, Alabama is 5-1 and one in matchups against Georgia. The only loss was Georgia's national championship game against Alabama. They are in Indianapolis. Ever since then, Alabama has dominated the series. Yeah, and even going back further than that, I, I looked up and saw that Georgia hasn't won in Tuscaloosa since 07. Yes. Obviously, people will be familiar with what was different in 07 than, yeah. uh, than years prior year. to that. Um, yeah, Nick's start. And, uh, I, you know, I talked to somebody on the on the Georgia side of things the other day, and, and they said, like, Alabama – I'm sorry, Georgia had a Nick Saban problem, which yes. most people in college football did, right? <laughs> like, that's not, that's not shocking. But Georgia can't – well, I loved when he said this. Georgia can't let their Nick Saban t- problem turn into an Alabama problem. Like, eventually right. that has to turn around. And obviously Alabama's side of this is – Yes, it needs to. And he needs right. to continue to be up. We need to uphold this. Um, you know, fans are irrational. Fans are certainly not going to be happy if, if they lose no. a close game to Georgia. You know, no. but it's, uh, you know, people are going to melt down. I'd be like over a team against like a number two team in the country. So anyway, but who does the game mean more to? In your opinion, like what, I, I understand the storylines for both sides. Georgia payback trying to get the monkey off their back, trying to, you know, Bama, trying to, the Kalen DeBoer stuff, trying to keep that going, the games at home. Who does the game mean more for? Georgia. And I say that because this is the time that Georgia can take over the crown that Nick Saban left. And Kirby Smart can say, all right, you guys had your dominance for about the past 20 years or so. Now it's our time. If they can get that win, I think they can do that. If not, then is Alabama still the team to beat, and why can't Kirby win the big one? Yeah, the the narratives look a lot worse for Georgia, I think, if they lose this. Now, in all reality, either team could lose this and still go on to win the SEC or maybe even a rematch. But, you know, I think – for Kalen, he gets a little more grace because he's been there for what, three, you know, three, four games at this right. point. Um, talk about the Milrow versus Beck matchup, and you know, who do you think two defenses that uh, are are both really good? Um, who do you think has more success against the other defense this weekend? I think Milrow because uh, Carson Beck played well in the game in Atlanta last year, but he didn't throw a touchdown pass. And he is going to have to open it up and go down the field if they're going to be able to pull off the upset. Milrow had a much better game against Georgia last year. He is an athlete who is a quarterback, and he is very mobile. And I think that's going to hurt Georgia just a little bit because they have not played well this year against mobile quarterbacks. Um, Alabama has, I don't want to say struggled, but they weren't super impressive, uh, against the run, uh, with, uh, with, uh, you know, USF has a, has a mobile quarterback too, but USF was running the ball fairly well. Is that a concern for, for Bama against a pretty good stable of backs, ETN and others there at UGA? Oh yeah. Because if you look at the game now, obviously Wisconsin scored 10 points, Alabama blew them out. But if you look at the game inside the game, Wisconsin had a bunch of 10-yard runs and more against Alabama, and that could be a little bit of a concern with ETN coming in and that stable of backs. So, yes, the run defense has been tested against Alabama, and it is susceptible just a little bit, as you talked about, versus South Florida and against Wisconsin and it's going to be interesting to see if Georgia can establish the run to start the game on Saturday night, because I will say this, though. When Georgia played Kentucky, the reason that that offense struggled was because they could not get a a, a, (laughs) they could not get a rush to set up the pass. They became one-dimensional, and Kentucky feasted on that, 
Georgia needs to establish the run on Saturday in order to set up the passing game because Georgia and Bobo love to do the play-action pass. And in the past, that has been problematic for Alabama versus Georgia. We talked a little bit before we got on here about the storm and obviously our thoughts are, you know, with, oh, yeah. with anybody in the path and, you know, we, we, we make a really big deal about football and football doesn't mean a lot of people, but certainly doesn't mean a lot compared to your safety and your health. So if you're in the path, we certainly are thinking of you and, and hope that you are staying as safe as possible or maybe even have evacuated. But um, that could certainly have an impact on the game. A, a wet, rainy, potentially, like it, it could be kind of a net. Now, a lot of projections have it, and you would know better than anybody, kind of being out of the area by the time the kickoff happens. But things are unpredictable. And it, if it's rained for two days or, or, or rained quite a bit in the area, certainly could have an impact if that thing kind of moves a little bit. And if that's the case, Alabama having their – offensive line kind of a little more intact now could favor Bama with that right. running game with not only Milrow, but their backs as well. Yes. Well, I do want to say this. As of right now, it looks like all of the rain is going to be just off to the east of us. Yeah. So we're not expected here in Tuscaloosa to see very much rain. That is a very different story if you're talking about the Sooners and the Tigers in Auburn they could be in for a muddy, mucky mess. Yeah. Um, do you expect the offenses to kind of get going? Do you, do you think this is more high scoring, more low scoring, or closer to the SEC championship, kind of right in the middle? Or how do you kind of see it shaking out as far as total points? Who Advantage offenses or defenses here? Offenses, I do. I really feel like the offense has the advantage here because Alabama has been suspect as well to the deep balls because there have been a couple of instances where Middle Tennessee, as well, I'm sorry, Western Kentucky and South Florida hit deep passes to wide open receivers and they just out, you know, just 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 missed them. By just by that much. Carson Beck is a much better quarterback with the downfield throwing, and so Alabama is going to have to make sure that they lock up on those wide receivers and don't give up the deep ball because Carson Beck will hit the deep ball because he's that accurate. If you're an Alabama fan and you're watching this game, what worries you the most? Is it is it a particular matchup? Is it a certain player? Is it all the hype and hoopla around the game? You know, certain uh, very infamous or famous <laughs> individuals being at the game, just yeah. the the pressure of a of a top five matchup. Like, what in this matchup worries you the most if you're Alabama? I would say the offensive line to see if they are better than they were last year because. Alabama's given up a couple of sacks this season early on, and Georgia is probably going to be one of the best defensive lines that Alabama will face this year outside of potentially Tennessee. And so it's going to be real interesting to see if Alabama has jailed again on the offensive line or if they've still got issues like they did all last season. So let's look at the inverse of that. If you're an Alabama fan, um, maybe what what doesn't concern you? What what gives you the most confidence? Playing at home, a certain again, a certain matchup, a certain player, a certain advantage that you think Alabama has in this game that uh, gives you a little bit more confidence that they are going to be able to hold off UGA. Just because of the way that that Georgia struggled on the road versus Kentucky, because Kentucky put that game into how they wanted to play it play bully ball a little bit, keep the offense off the field for Georgia, and then mess up the run game a little bit so that Georgia had to rely on Carson Beck to throw the ball. And I think if you make Georgia drive the length of the field and not give up the explosive runs and the explosive plays, that Carson Beck will make a few mistakes that could go into the favor of Alabama. And I think being at home is a huge thing for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Yeah, I, I almost feel like if, if Kentucky was slightly more aggressive 
they probably win that game. And you have yep. to capitalize, right? You you go for it on a fourth and two. You got to convert that. You 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 end up kicking a field goal instead of kind of trying to test it with a few seconds left in the half. Like you you got to capitalize on it, right? So aggressiveness could screw you over. But if they were slightly more, and I think Kalen would be, especially at home. Like I, you know, right. I know Kentucky was at home too, but it, at home and being Alabama, I, I think he'd be less conservative. That's just a guess, right? Like, but I think that's his personality is to, and, and with, I mean, you know, Kentucky has a, a talent. There's a talent gap there, right? Yes. Whereas Bama and Georgia have s- certainly less of a, a gap right. either way. And so if I'm Kalen, I'm probably a little more aggressive. And so if they can play, if, if they can follow the Kentucky blueprint, I think they will be in pretty yeah. good shape. Um, easier said than done. I will say this though, too, uh, getting off of this and no, we're not going to touch on this topic, but, but if you're Alabama, you should be concerned just a little bit about the former president coming because the last time the former president came to Tuscaloosa was in 2019, Bama lost to LSU. So just saying. <laughs> a little bit of a joke. I'm just saying. I mean, I, <laughs> and, and I, I want to say, I want to say that President Trump attended one of the national championship games between Alabama and Georgia. And if memory serves me correctly, I do believe that was the one Alabama lost in Indianapolis. If they, if, if they lose this one, they will bar him from the stadium. They'll, so (laughs) I mean, I'm not to get into politics, but I'm just saying the last time, I mean, the, yeah. So, I mean, the last time Trump did come to Tuscaloosa, Alabama lost to Joe Burrow and LSU. I mean, uh, Joe Burrow and LSU, they're a good football team, but I'm also saying that as well. Yeah, a little – yeah, I can say if they lose another one with him there, they're going to say no more. Watch on TV, yeah. man. Yes. Um, yes. Do you have a lean? Do you have a prediction on how this one will go uh, here on Thursday morning? Dude, I just, I, I, both of them were so sloppy the last time out. Well, no, I, let, let me take that back. Georgia was sloppy against Kentucky. Alabama was sloppy against South Florida. They kind of cleaned it up against Wisconsin, but Wisconsin doesn't have the horses that Georgia does. Dude, I, at some point, you've got to beat the streak of losing to Alabama and Tuscaloosa. I think right now Georgia is a better football team than Alabama because we're still getting into the Kellen DeBoer offense at Alabama. I'm going to go Georgia winning this game 23-20 to on a late field goal, but I'm not very confident in that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I think Georgia would be my pick. Yeah. But I have zero confidence, and I do think it's going to be an incredibly close, incredibly good game, like live up to the hype good game. Like we, we've we seen some game day games just kind of get away and, and not yeah. be very fun. That LSU-South Carolina one was fantastic. So something, you know, I don't know if it'll be right. that exciting because that one was off the charts. But right. if, something, if we get something close to that, I think we'll all be pretty happy. I, again, unless you're a fan of a team, then half of you will be, will be upset. But Stingray, hey, go ahead. Last week, college game day was in Norman, Oklahoma. That was a dud of a game because oh, yeah. Oklahoma was down 19-3 to at the half. Ugh. Game was over. <laughs> Didn't matter. Yes. You, they, quarterback swap, everything else. So, yeah. so, Stingray, where can people follow you? Where can they find more of your work um, and check out more of your content? All right. On Twitter, it is uh, – or X, whichever one you want to call. I still call it Twitter because uh, I just – I like the old school thing. I'm going with uh, – it's at Stephen Ray 30 My Facebook page is Stephen Stingray Ray. You can find me also on Facebook, The Stingray Show. And then, of course, we've got a YouTube page with all of the shows that we do on the radio. The next day we post them on our podcast page – on YouTube, the Sting Ray Show, and look for me at meteorologist Stephen Ray as I will be covering the latest with the weather information as the hurricane makes landfall later this evening. Awesome, man. Well, we appreciate you a ton for hanging out. Stay safe this weekend. Enjoy the uh, enjoy the chaos, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, man. Thank you so much. And hey, if you're coming up to the game, be safe and get there very early. Will do. Thanks, buddy. Thank you.